Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad, but we're always walking on ruins. Where will the birds fly to when the flood comes? What is a symbol but a word without a sound? I hold tight to the feeling of being almost lost, barely lost, wandering with conviction. If I could tell Dad that I left home, I would describe this feeling to him in detail. The faces look trapped in there.
Is this a sculpture or raw materials? This house has such a palpable personality. This instrument is so beat up, but lovingly preserved. It must have played some important tunes. Too bad this is sold out and happened a hundred years ago. I'm going to different places for my food and my minerals. The golden season was pretty weird. Mm, I'm not sure what to think about this. Click. The valley used to be so full of the sounds you couldn't hear yourself think. Now to hear it again. That sweet, awful click. You came to see the work of the reclusive artist. Come here. Let me see. Bring it close. My eyes. I can only see here. Awful. Form, color, subject, simply awful. That was me trying to play to the crowd to be charming. A crazy woman made this junk. An artist. I buried her a long time ago. I'm surrounded by it. I spent my life trying to make something beautiful and true. I failed. Can you bring me photos of my art? I'd like to see my work one more time. I want to see how I wasted my life. I think that is... Matura. Come, show me. What do you think of it? Mm. 
wrong. What a soulless object. Look at that face. Broken eyes. Nothing graceful about it. I should have grown ivy over them. At least the flood will take it all away. Was I never truly inspired? Did I really fail so completely? Let's see another. A face worn with the strain of creation. She is compelled to create, like how I feel compelled to document this season. They look like they passed out. The color is hideous. I thought if I stood outside his door long enough in the rain, that God would let me inside. All I did was toil my fingers to pieces. I wanted to capture this valley in a piece of art. That's all. Best of luck to you. I tried my whole life, and all I did was create piles of trash. Enough about my... Let me see what else you've got in that journal. My trash all on a page together, like a real art exhibit. One day, you could add my name to it. Mitsura. They might as well know who to blame. The museum vault. Every artist dreams of their work hanging on its walls. Oh, oh my god. You'll try to go there? It's so far. It'll drain your life away trying to reach it. It might be a longer term than you expect. You may be as old as I am by the time you get there. Your journal might end up in the vault, which means my artwork might end up there. Oh, that would redeem everything. Every wasted hour. When the dream crawls back out of your throat, it hurts. But I can do better than those little statues. I can, if you help me. This art will memorialize Cheng Valley, and we'll finish it together. Cheng Valley has many faces, many themes, characters, eras, stages of its existence. Take a look through this junk, and we'll pick one of those faces. A face to show Cheng Valley to the unborn children of the next season. You do that while I make some tea. <laughs> You seem lost. We are here to choose a theme for our artwork. You can see through the clutter. I have looked at all this for far too long to see it. There are no mistakes, only wayward inspiration. Just pick the face, facet of Cheng Valley that calls out to you.
stone and soil, water and wood, a collection of samples of the ecosystem of the valley. Is the ecology of the valley the root cause of everything that happened here? You've brought me pieces of the valley itself, the natural world. What we took from it, what we were given. What if our destiny is not in our hearts, but in the soil of the earth? Do you want this to be our theme? Very good. And the tea is ready. In the past, I tried to control everything. My work was dead. This time, let's follow our intuition, gather some pieces, and see what happens. What magic might be hiding in this day, which will pass and never return? This tea is good for the throat. It makes me want to sing. Chubaleni husanota Chubaleni Sabe Chubaleni Husanota Krimo Sanahi Pleminu. Sakanora Pleminu no sapetu Pleminu no caserota Manano Masse Dudua it. That was Cheng Valley. I thought we would capture Cheng Valley in a piece of art, but we captured it in a moment instead. A moment can never hang on the wall of a museum, but you will still carry it with you. You, you were the co-author of this moment, I would never have found it without you. I'll rest these weary knees, these old eyes. But you're welcome to bring me images of this valley, as long as you bring them close enough for me to see. I'll tell you what I know. There's only a little bit of today left. 
And then, the city, the flood, the lights, the next season. The text is barely legible. Three aphorisms from the young. None should see the face of love and live. Just one more to complete the set. Night has fallen. The doors to the shrine must be open now. I knew my brain was doing something special. I thought I'd wake up with an idea for a new shape or color. Everybody would love my new shape or color. But instead, my brain gave me a dream which made people afraid. Which is making you leave. We don't think we have power, so we don't do anything. But you found something to do. I think that's nice. The Elder said it means the season is ending soon. I want to tell you the dream now. Let's shut our eyes and lay on the roof. We are already on the roof. That's good. I'll speak the dream out loud and you imagine it. You can close your eyes now. I'll tell you when to open them. I am in the forest. The sun is bright. My stomach rumbles. I'm hungry. I look for something to eat. There are fruit trees lining the path. I look for one to pick, to eat. I climb up one of the trees and reach out to grab a shining red apple. I blink. And suddenly, the apple is rotten. It looks like it's full of spiders. I blink again, and now the apple is just a baby apple. Not ripe or rotten. I lose my balance and fall onto the ground. The apple changes colors. Some are eaten, some disappear. I hear a voice. Someone is there with me. I try to recognize who they are, but their face keeps changing. They're kind of everyone. I tell them I'm hungry. I want what the earth is trying to give me. They say, these aren't apples. They're memories of every apple I've ever seen. There's something wrong with my eyes and there's something wrong with the soil. They say I need to look into the sun to clear out my vision. 
They say we're going to look together, and that when we do, they'll melt away. They want to. Then behind them, I see you, watching from the shadows. You've been taking notes on everything. This makes me feel better. I turn my head and I let the light in. I lose track of everything. When I get my senses back, I find myself holding a round red fruit in my hand. I don't know what it is, but I take a bite, and it's the most delicious thing I've ever tasted. Then I woke up. You can open your eyes now. You probably have questions. It wasn't only my fault that the apples were acting funny. It seemed like the natural world, or whatever it's called, the land didn't know what time it was either. The soil had to forget a little. The face of the ghost person in the dream? They were everyone and no one. It reminded me of someone I used to look for. My birth was not easy. I was bigger than most babies. After I was born, the elder advised them not to have any more children. But years later, my parents tried. They told me I'd have a sibling, but we lost them a few weeks later. I felt like it was my fault. I should have been born last, if ever. I needed to see this missing person somewhere. So I searched faces for a face I'd never seen. I thought I had to carry them forever. But in the dream, they wanted to become part of everything. I had to let them go, which felt like a piece of me was dying. It hurts a lot, but it's a nice thing to do if, if you can. To let part of you become part of everything. Oh, I feel a bit winded now. I feel like everything is happening the way it should, but I still wish none of it would happen at all. I wish my dream didn't mean anything. I wish we had wasted more time together. I know. Thank you for reminding me. We'll go down this roof together, and you'll keep going down and down, down into the heart of the world. Thank you for listening to my dream.
This must be for writing something. But what? We have Dr. Fumio's cures to negotiate with the exigencies of life as a conscious being. Here, they have a religion. The form changes. Our needs remain the same. I knew once I went into the shrine, my time to explore the valley was over. This god must be important to be the only one here. This isn't your first day on the job. There isn't much season left to record. What's that? Around your neck. That's a pendant. You're wearing a pendant. My God, I've read about those. A pendant, a burner, five memories, one for each sense. Who did you make the pendant with? And who lost the memories, you or her? I see. And what was something you burned? You burned a piece of old candy and a memory? Interesting ritual. Similar to what we do here, but different. Yeah, why do I? Your mind will make it into the next season intact. You're protected by five senses, five lost memories. But what about everyone else? You ever think about that? Well, I don't need one. I'll be right here until the flood takes me.
I told you I read about them. Look at you, protected. The rest of the world is not so lucky. Me, the people you've met on your way here, nobody else is protected. You think everyone makes it into a new season intact? Tell that to the boys face down in the parking lot. You know things are about to change. I can tell. A collective pendant to protect a group instead of one person. You're welcome to try. My memories are all over the shrine. You can have them, destroy them, whatever you want. Asking an old monk to invent a new ritual. Let me die in peace.
itself together. He dies, the war starts, her season ends. And I tell you already, hope is the most painful thing in the world. An old monk surrounded by his memories. Is this a shrine to a god? Or is it a shrine to his past? That's well, old prayer leaves. The woman who took care of me taught me to pray with this incense burning. I wanted to learn, but when we kneeled down together, her being so close to me and the smell, I couldn't focus. She'd get angry, but I'd just get more lost. I asked her, which direction is God facing? She said, every direction. I said, so can I pray to change the past? And she said, of course, we change the past every time we remember it. I was so happy in that moment to have been found by her. I could have been found by anybody, or by nobody. That's five. Five memories. Five senses. My name is Ezel. I was the last monk of Tiang Valley. I never finished my exams to be a monk, but I'm the only one left. <laughs> I took becoming a monk for granted because I grew up around them. If you're including a ruin like me, you must be serious about recording this season. What will you write about me? I chose to remain in this season. I was orphaned by the war. The monks found me on the coast, wandering alone, shell-shocked. Sonia, the head monk, took care of me. I saw things I shouldn't have. She helped me erase those memories. If I had any memories of my family, I lost them too. But at least I didn't wake up screaming anymore. I was so afraid of accidentally calling her mum. She was the head monk, even before she ended the war. Sonia was an imposing figure. I slept, I forgot, and I grew. The soldiers came to the valley. Sonia hated the war for taking my family like it took so many others. The most powerful prayers are always made out of desperation. She figured out how to amplify our sleep prayer, a prayer that could end a season. No one had ever done anything like that. 
She sent me to the coast to turn on the light posts, to signal that the season would end soon. I used to go to the light posts alone, just to, to dream about another season, to dream about being born in another season, to die in another season, to imagine a life where I wasn't afraid to have hope. I'd like you to have one of these photos, to carry it with you to wherever you're going. Really? Why? I wish you knew her. She was never the same after the big prayer. Nothing was. They've shut off the power. Won't be long now. Imagine the waves rolling in here. The water is so deep that light won't reach us. I should pray one last time. We should both pray right now. Your pendant, the sacrifice your mother made to keep you safe. It might be possible to pass on this blessing, to divide its power among the people you've met on your journey, to shepherd them into the next season. For a truly strong player, we would need... We would need to use up the power of your pendant. I'm not sure it would work. It's never been done before. But I know it would weaken your pendant. In that case, nobody would be protected. Before you light the candle, I want you to think hard about if you want to do this. Do you want to pass on this blessing and leave yourself vulnerable? Or will you continue your role as a vessel of memory? The true end of the Tiang Valley was not the flood coming. 
it was when these people would go their separate ways. At the last possible moment, I saw them as a community. Without the protection of my pendant, I felt even closer to them. Whatever happens, we're all in it together. gray hand arrived. He had what he called passports for everyone. He said they were supposed to have a photo, but that his camera was broken and he wanted to use mine. I saw in these little papers the beginning of a new world. He asked me if I could help him. I had only one moment to decide. I said, yes. The gray hand thanked me. He gave me a pin and told me their new name would be Floral Path. said he felt like driving all night. Listen closely. The road behind you leads to the coast. There's an old warning system on the beach. An emergency light that can be seen from the other side of the ocean. You can warn the rest of the world about the change of season. All you have to do is turn it on. It was built to survive anything. I'm sure it still works. Do you understand? I've been thinking about that all night. I have this idea to turn my van into a shrine. For every sermon I preach, I'll listen to ten, and you, you will remember everything. You will survive everything. Rest transparent in the spirit that gives you rise. Farewell.
The elder told me she grew up on a watery republic. The ship was commandeered during the war. Her motto is very much in line with what I've learned about the golden season. Hello. I love you. Ice cream. <gasps> no problems. What this do? Turn them on? Aha! I think wrong. It's not for sport. <laughs> My village. I draw the life. You see? You? Safe village. So. Statue. We have statue for war. It's weird, no? I have weird. Public lizard for everyone.
No. <laughs> I say I live home. My mother will no cry goodbye. Your mother? Ah, sad mom. Morning, I leave. I go far, far? Hmm? Alone, long time. I leave home. Ah, good. I may stay like I can abe, I'm a mola. As I'll stay Camila ek o hack. Nest left o hack, I must ask. O I'll tell ek and ek at me. All the mob, a gal air, it o. I otak asta, ak eli ek o hack. Ah, I ever knock el. Ola han o nalol ek en ek. Look at crab now. I see. I like it. I draw. What do you like? Ah. Uh -huh. Sound. To play sound. You play sound. I heard a lot of music on my trip, but never saw anybody playing it. Just instruments, recordings, echoes. Good. Here? Three days together. Friend now. Sad that I go. Here, together, we are same. The warning lights look bigger than an easel's photo. The lights sent out a warning to the other side of the world. I wondered if anyone was watching. 
I wondered if anyone remembers what it means. This season is over. My new friend is sailing home in the morning. I've decided to go with him. I feel so scared and so relieved at the same time. I can't think straight. Before sailing into the unknown, I checked in on my journal, my letter to the future. blinding light, and a strange pattern disappeared off the surface of the water. My mind emptied out, but then my senses came alive. I smelled the ocean air, felt the boat rocking, heard the waves rolling, saw someone else was with me. I detected the world for the first time. I was overwhelmed by its beauty and a feeling of possibility. Then I found this journal and I read carefully through each page. It says, here is my home, my mom, my friends. I didn't recognize any of them and the loss hit me I became aware of a massive absence. And I realized that if it wasn't for this journal, I wouldn't even know I lost anything at all. These pages are a little bridge between us and the world that just disappeared. And I put them together, so that must be who I am. Someone who left their home to take measure of the world before it changed. Here's a record of the people I met along the way, moments from their lives at the end of this era. It seems to have been a season where our minds wandered through memories and dreams of the past. I'll continue taking measure of the world, even if I never make it to a palace of art and memory. No matter where you're reading this, I offer you my journal and the lives inside it. If anything in here escapes from the page into the world, let it be one sentence. Just a few words you heard from a traveler on a bicycle. When at the end of the evening, 
she turned to you and said, It is not too late. How to leave home for my daughter. Find a sacred square of earth. Lay down so you have the dirt at your back. Close your eyes. Close everything. Do you see for yourself? You see for the dead, for the unborn. Do you listen for yourself? You listen for the dead, for the unborn. Your ancestors are in that dirt. All the living and all the dead are holding you up. Now stand. They're still there, aren't they? It's time to move, to entangle yourself everywhere with everyone. So the next time you lay down in the dirt, you will have so much more to tell them.